Chronic rhinosinusitis is a chronic inflammatory disease of the nose and paranasal sinuses, which profoundly affects patients' lives. Treatment is often hit and miss and very dependent on the treating physician. So, in an attempt to streamline and provide up-to-date treatment pathways, Euphoria has produced a novel treatment algorithm and pocket guide for CRS and it's proving to be a game changer. This is Euphoria News broadcasting from London. Hello and welcome to Euphoria News. I'm Dr. David Bull. Chronic rhinosinusitis is an inflammatory disease of the nose and paranasal sinuses that occurs in about 10% of the population and can significantly decrease people's quality of life. It's also associated with an increased risk of developing asthma. It's defined by the presence of at least two out of four cardinal symptoms, which are facial pain and pressure, smell dysfunction with anosmia, nasal discharge and nasal obstruction for at least 12 consecutive weeks. Treatment is directed at enhancing mucociliary clearance, improving sinus drainage, eradicating local infection and inflammation and improving access for topical treatments. And treatment options range from nasal saline irrigation and intranasal corticosteroid sprays to antibiotics, biologics and endoscopic sinus surgery. Despite the burden of disease, many patients are deprived of a proper diagnosis and also are not receiving adequate care. And that's why Euphoria has produced its novel treatment algorithm. Well, joining me now, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Dermot Ryan. He's Honorary Fellow at the University of Edinburgh. He's also Director of the International Primary Care Respiratory Group and member of the Euphoria Asthma Expert Panel. Very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Now, clearly, CRS is a real problem for patients and their physicians, and it seems that treatment seems to be a bit of a lottery sometimes. Sometimes the diagnosis is also delayed as well. What are your thoughts on that? The task of a primary care physician is, is very difficult because they're looking after people with all diseases from all ages, largely from when they're born until such a time as they die. So their training in all areas of any individual discipline can be somewhat limited. And this is particularly true probably of chronic rhinosinusitis. So chronic rhinosinusitis to most GPs would mean a chronic infection in the sinuses which needed to be treated with uh, antibiotics on a intermittent or recurrent basis. Unless it's giving real trouble to the patients, many GPs would not refer such a patient to see a specialist for a clear diagnosis uh, and an exploration of other treatment options which may be open to that patient which would improve their outcomes and their quality of life. I, th I think you make a very good point there uh, about the, the generality of being a primary care physician. So do you think it's fair to say that primary care physicians really need more help in terms of advising uh, how they can treat these patients? As we understand, understand more about all sorts of chronic diseases, um, with the advancing knowledge available, GPs need help, simple, immediate, practical, relevant assistance uh, to enable them to make the right decisions for their patients. No GP is going to read, for example, the EPOS guideline is incredibly long, very complex. So having a, uh, a precy of those guidelines that is relevant to their needs is really, really important. And I think we've probably achieved that in the Euphoria handbook. So, so that brings me nicely onto the pocket guides and the treatment algorithm. So again, you're saying that really this is a distillation, a summary that helps those primary care physicians to make the right choices. Yes, that's, that's really what I'm saying. And I think the introduction of the, particularly the idea of uh, nasal irrigation is something which has probably not been particularly considered by GPs in the past and be very, very helpful. There's no doubt that people with low-level uh, chronic rhinosinusitis can probably be managed in primary care without necessarily having a referral because there's probably not a huge amount a specialist has to offer them. 
But those people with, with more severe symptoms, they would merit a referral because there's an awful lot that can be done for them nowadays. It's also become much more obvious in the last five to 10 years that chronic rhinocytis has a role to play in people with uncontrolled asthma. So looking at that in people with uncontrolled asthma, I think is probably very much worthwhile and is worth putting in, in, in the recommendations for referral, both to an ear, nose and throat specialist, but also to a pulmonologist. So what's been the response of the pocket guide to the primary care physicians? That's very difficult to ascertain at the moment. Um, I work in the United Kingdom, and as you're probably aware, primary care in this country is under a lot of pressure. Um, so the guideline has been released recently, but with the post-COVID problems, the long COVID, the increased mortality rate, which has not been specified in the UK, the epidemic of flu and streptococcus A infections, uh, GPs are reeling and taking on new information at this time has probably not been their major priority. You, you make some very important points there, but what do you hope will be the impact of this Euphoria initiative on CRS care in the future? One would hope that it would trickle down into the GP press. So there are two or three papers which are now online daily, but paper compendiums uh, about once a month, which go to nearly all GPs in the country. They tend to produce uh, a distillation of recent guidelines in an assimilable form for GPs to read and understand, and therefore ultimately to, to generate new ideas and new approaches to disease management. This is ongoing for all uh, disease areas. Well, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Dermot Ryan. My pleasure. Well, joining me now is Professor Peter Hellings. He is Professor of Otorhinolaryngology and Clinic Head at the Department of Otorhinolaryngology at the University of Leuven in Belgium. He's also the coordinator of the new pocket guide for CRS by Euphoria. Very good to see you, Peter. So let me start by asking you, how does this new Euphoria initiative fit within the international landscape of guidelines? Well, the international guidelines or the landscape of international guidelines may be very diffuse because we have the European guidelines, we have American guidelines, we have national guidelines. And the aim of Euphoria was to bring the knowledge of different guidelines into one document, a document that would be simple, that could be understood by all healthcare providers, and that would help the patients better in order to receive a good diagnosis and also timely treatment for chronic rhinosinusitis. So obviously you say it fulfills a need, and I suppose that's what makes the Euphoria treatment algorithm unique. The fact is you've got one guide where you've distilled all the information from all the other guides around the world. Well, indeed, uh, this pocket guide with treatment algorithm is simple, reflects the reality of every single patient and is inclusive. And when I talk about the simplicity, it's good to understand that we do not try to overcomplicate the reality of sinusitis care and want to make sure that every single physician can understand what chronic sinusitis care is all about. Secondly, one of the other unique aspects is that this pocket guide reflects the reality of every single patient because with the Euphoria pocket guide and algorithm, we take into account the history of the patient, the willingness of a patient to undergo a certain treatment strategy, as well as the environment of the patient. And last but not least, this pocket guide is also inclusive because the Euphoria expert panels that have joined forces in the development of this pocket guide all work together in order to make sure that the multidisciplinarity of care of CRS is very well reflected within this pocket guide. I mean, it's very interesting, actually. I was just talking to Dr. Dermot Ryan before speaking to you, and he was saying that actually many primary care physicians, of course, know an awful lot about all sorts of subjects. But actually, for CRS, this is really important. The fact is that they can find this information. It's distilled into one simple guide. And I guess that was really the aim of this, this algorithm and why Euphoria did it in the first place. Indeed, the aims were multiple, but the major aims were mainly to make sure many patients who nowadays remain deprived of a proper diagnosis 
would go and see an ENT physician that can, on the base of the symptoms, as well as on nasal endoscopy, make a proper diagnosis. So a proper diagnosis was one of the aims of this pocket guide and this euphoria initiative. And the second main aim is to guarantee that the majority of patients with chronic primary sinusitis receive the best possible care. And what's been the response to the pocket guide? <laughs> As you can imagine, the response is very positive. And actually, we built this positive response on a tradition that we have within Euphoria of providing novel guidelines and pocket guides that help physicians to treat patients with chronic respiratory diseases in a better way. And I refer here to the pocket guide of allergic rhinitis for both adult patients as well as the pediatric population that is now translated in multiple languages and disseminated across the globe. And this will also happen with this euphoria pocket guide on chronic sinus disease where lay language translations for patients, as well as uh, translations of the current physician pocket guide, will ultimately lead to a good dissemination across the globe. Well, it seems that you've achieved an awful lot. So what do you believe are the next steps beyond this pocket guide for CRS? <laughs> Well, that's indeed a very good question. And nowadays, the expert panels of asthma are working on an asthma pocket guide and simplified treatment algorithm for asthma. And this builds further on the tradition of euphoria, trying to implement optimal care in daily practice. Well, Peter, it's always such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Peter Hellings. My pleasure. Thank you very much, David. Well, that's it for this Euphoria News. Many thanks to my guests, to Dr Dermot Ryan and Professor Peter Hellings. Don't forget to check out Euphoria's Pocket Guide for the treatment of CRS, which you can find on the Euphoria website. Now you can find more information about Euphoria and also register for the Euphoria educational events on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. And don't forget to follow us on social media on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Until next time, goodbye.